Hello everyone, I um, hope everyone can hear me and uh, welcome to this uh, Midas Gen uh, webinar. Um, we just allowed a bit of time for everyone to show up. Um, we're in a almost full set now, so we're going to start this. Um, today's session, um, I'll first be talking to you about the company, a very brief introduction about Midas, and then we're going to focus on our building solution, which is Midas Gen. So starting with the company, um, Midas is the world's leading developer of engineering software solutions in the CBO and structural engineering industry. Um, we have um, the largest numbers of engineers, developers and a team that will help us um, develop our products all around the world. We have more than 100, uh, we're distributing our software in more than 120 countries. Um, we have more than 10,000 clients and a total number of distributed licenses of more than 30,000 um, around the world. We hold the number one market share and this makes us the largest um, developer in the world. We have uh, headquarters and offices around the world. Um, and we have headquarters in Korea and branch offices around the world. Um, starting from the USA, uh, UK, Russia, India, Singapore, um, Ch China, Japan and so on. And we also have a number of different partners from different countries around the world which help us distribute our software and support our users. In terms of products, we focus on a few main fields, um, pretty much covering all of the civil engineering industry. Um, we have a building and uh, general structures package, which is Midas Gen. This will be what we'll be focusing on today, and we'll talk about it in more detail. Uh, but we also have a bridge and civil engineering package. This is Midas CVU combined with Midas FEA. Um, we also have a um, geotechnical package for the geotechnical engineers. Um, that's Midas GTS and SOWORKS, which allows us to look into ground-related prob problems. And we also have a mechanical engineering uh, solution, which is Midas NFX, um, which f uh, deals with uh, full mechanical motion design and uh, engineering analysis and so on. In terms of uh, clients, you can see a partial list of some of our global clients. Um, of course, I'm sure you'll be able to notice some of the most major companies around the world, as we hold more than 50 of the global top 100 companies um, within our list. In terms of um, just a brief introduction of the different packages before we focus on Midas Gen. Um, so first Midas Gen, um, what it is, it's a finite element software. Um, it's uh, some of the most iconic buildings around the world have been done using it. Um, as you can see, Burj Khalifa Kingdom Tower, Beijing Olympic Stadium. Um, some of the, uh, the application areas of the program, um, pretty much any type of general structure or building uh, can be done within the software from um, low to middle and high rise buildings. Um, the software ha develops, uh, the software caters for plant structures, airport hangars as well. Um, we have a number of projects in terms of stadia, areas, different um, uh, arenas, different venues and so on being designed. The software fully supports all types of um, construction stage analysis which caters for especially for the high-rise buildings where we have special functionalities for column shortening and so on but we also support pre-post tensioning, non-linear analysis, full seismic um, functionalities and so on. In terms of just a few of the um, projects uh, that have been done using our uh, Midas Gen um, we already mentioned Burj Khalifa, currently the world's tallest buildings. Uh, we also have the Moscow City Palace Tower. Um, we have the Gangjiao Twin Tower. Um, but not only buildings, as I mentioned, we have status, so Beijing National Stadium, and so on. In terms of civil engineering and bridges, um, as I mentioned, we have Midas Civil. This is our bridge uh, analysis and design package. Um, this um, product is uh, targeted at pretty much any type of bridge construction or design that you need to deal with. Um, it covers from conventional bridges like skew, frame, covered uh, type of structures, goes through segmental cable state and suspension bridges. So from the low to the high end of the bridge construction, everything can be covered. Um, it has special features to cater for each one of those bridges, um, but today that's not the focus, so I'm just going to briefly touch on it. In terms of just a few uh, projects that have been done with Midas Civil, um, Rusky Island Bridge, um, currently the world's longest and tallest cable state bridge in the world. We have the Leroy Salmon flyovers, um, we have different viaducts, um, uh, the Tarango Bridge, 
um, and so on. We have um, extra dose bridges as well, as I mentioned, uh, software caters for um, simple as well as the highest complexity type of structures, um, and all of this can be done within a single package. Moving on to, ge to the geotechnics, uh, we have a geotechnical solution, so MIDAS GTS. Um, this can be done for pretty much um, any type of uh, soil related analysis that you need to deal with, whether it be deep foundation, soil structure interaction, excavations or temporary works. Um, if we're looking into underground structures or tunnels, anything can be handled. Um, but it doesn't have to necessarily have um, structure read in it. We can also look just into ground analysis in terms of slope stability and embankments, groundwater flow, and so on. Um, just a few projects again. Um, the Trans Hudson Express, so the um, connection under the river is, um, has been done. The King's Cross Station, where an extra uh, shaft had to be analyzed to be added or the Dubai, and the Dubai Tower, um, again the foundations had been um, checked with the whole uh, excavation for it. We have also the Odeon Tower in Monaco, um, a very complex structure with deep excavation in this very um, slope and surrounding many other structures around it. So all of this has been done um, in one way or another with Midas GTS. And finally a, a few brief words about uh, mechanical software. This is Midas NFX. Um, this goes to the full um, in explicit solver with all the motion analysis um, for fully checking any type of um, mechanical engineering. You can look into automotive, uh, automotive and heavy industries, shipping, maritime, aerospace, um, different electronics and electrical engineering, semiconductors and so on. Um, the software can look into um, durability analysis of heavy equipment, whether it be stress analysis, motion analysis, um, computation of fluid dynamics, all of this can be covered. It also deals with composite materials, so all of our products um, deal with all types of materials. They are not targeted at a given uh, material like steel or concrete or um, anything like this. They cover any type, any range of materials that you need to deal with. And because before I close this um, introduction of the company, just a few upcoming records by Midas. Um, currently the Kingdom Tower in Saudi Arabia, which would be the world's tallest building when completed. We're also looking at the world's longest suspension bridge, the Sundas Trade Bridge in Indonesia, which will have a main span of over three and a half meters, uh, three and a half kilometers. And we already have the Rusky Island Bridge in Russia, which is currently the longest cable state bridge uh, with a main span of uh, 1.1 kilometers. So today's topic, uh, Midas Gen, as I mentioned, we'll be focusing on our um, buildings and general structures package. So the, pr and the presentation will go through um, a few separate parts. First, we're going to look into a product overview. Then we're going to talk about the user interface, modeling data, uh, boundary and load conditions that can be specified. We're going to talk about the analysis capabilities as well as some of the post-processing and design capabilities of the software. So starting with the um, just an overview of the, uh, the pr product, um, this is a finite element software which caters for any type of general structure or building that you need to um, analyze. It has special features targeted towards seismic design, um, whether it be static response spectrum or time history, all of this can be catered if you're looking into structures um, in seismic areas around the world. Um, the software also has comprehensive design features, so the software is not only analysis, it does automatic design checks for you based on all sorts of different codes from around the world, um, including the Euro code being the most relevant here. It has special high-rise functionalities um, which cater for generation of the model in a very easy and quick way, as well as construction stage analysis, time-dependent properties, column shortening, and all of these um, there are special features which cater for uh, such type of design and uh, design and analysis, analysis and design of structures, um, which give us um, the results directly available for us for any given stage. And of course, the software has, um, we like to claim, one of the most intuitive user interface. Uh, we'll be talking about that shortly. The software is 64-bit, um, so it fully supports 64-bit software pre-pulsing processor, um, which makes it one of the um, probably the fastest software out there. 
um, being able to make full use of all the available hardware resources, um, which allows us to deal with really large projects or um, much quicker with even the same projects. So moving on to graphic user interface. The, user, uh, the interface of the software looks um, as shown on the screen. On the top we have the ribbon menu, um, in the middle we have the model space, at the bottom there is a message window, and then on the left and right we can activate um, the so-called tree menus, which gives us access to all functions and access to anything defined in the model. Um, through the tree menu we can um, check our models, we can define our properties, modify them, assign them and so on. So basically the user interface is up to date with all the modern standards um, and it's extremely flexible and allows us to do anything in a number of ways, whichever is most convenient for a given user. In terms of uh, working environment, the software supports multi-window uh, viewports, which can be all, uh, um, which can be both graphical, table format, graph format. Anything can be arranged within the software. There are different types of display, and all of this, all for the convenience of easily linking results and looking um, between our output. In the modeling space itself, the software provides all type of different visualization techniques. We have transpar transparencies, walkthroughs, we have different coloring of based on elements, materials, and so on. So all of this is there available to make it um, easier and convenient to check our models. The software is also uh, fully compatible in terms of data exchange and merging files. Um, we have direct transfers with Tecto Revit and STAT. We also have um, interaction with um, Revit structure in terms of uh, transferring the models directly through uh, back and forth between the two um, products. We have um, a merge function which uh, allows us to easily compile models. So if we have large uh, project projects where we have different teams working on the same uh, project but different parts of it, they can look into their, uh, into their segments individually and then we can combine that for a complete final analysis. Um, there are also a number of um, what we call quick and easy features which are targeted towards making it easy and um, easy to use every day for the uh, users. Uh, being a number of selection methods, obviously there is select single window, polygon, select by identity and so on. Um, but there's also the user coordinate system. We can choose any coordinate system to use. We can rotate it defined um, based on um, different orientations. The software also allows for uh, unit conversion. We can change the units at any given time within our modeling, output, analysis, and so on. And the software provides an unlimited undo redo function, so we can go back and forth, make sure that we haven't messed up something with our models, or even just check between different um, options. In terms of model data generation, um, let's talk a bit about that. The software provides a vast database of materials. Um, from different standards around the world, so those can be checked. Um, those can be chosen directly if um, we don't want to work with user-defined ones. Um, and the software also fully supports creep and shrinkage as well as compressive strength. So all sort of type, time-dependent properties for the materials are supported. Section data. This again, um, a large number of standards from around the world with standard shapes are supported, and those can be chosen directly from the database. Or, of course, we can, use, uh, we can work with uh, user-defined sections. The, um, we have a number of different quick modeling generation uh, features, which we call wizards. Um, those help us to define uh, pretty much standard shapes uh, in a matter of just a few uh, parameters. And then the software will generate that for us in terms of um, trusses, beams, columns, shells, um, and so on. Um, moving a bit further in terms of uh, building analysis, the software has um, auto -gen automatic generation of stories and floor diaphragms. So once we set up our models, we can automatically uh, define our floor levels and then the software will consider those whether we want or not with um, floor diaphragms, um, which then will bring us to a number of different results in, uh, related to the story, relate, uh, story results. So story shear, um, displacements and so on. The software handles um, all types of elements. We deal with um, 1D, 2D and 3D, so beams, plates and solids. Um, and in relation to the plates, the software has an, um, an auto-mesh uh, feature, so uh, the software can automatically mesh for us areas. 
based on the chosen types and uh, size of elements. Um, it can also automatically detect, uh, detect um, internal openings, um, elements, connectivity with um, other nodes and so on. Um, we also have a feature for uh, modeling of walls. We have special element for walls and those elements can also be defined uh, with openings in them. So the software can automatically consider those based on a very simple definition um, and then those can be um, accounted for appropriately in uh, the beam or wall design. Um, in terms of load and boundary conditions, um, let's talk about that. Um, in the software there's a vast number of different um, type of loads which can be applied and um, which can pretty much simulate anything that we need to apply on our structure. Um, starting with um, self-weight nodal loads, uh, displacement, element beam loads, all of this is available. We also have pre-tension, temperature, tendons, hydrostatic pressure. Um, we move on to static wind and seismic loads as well as response spectrum. Um, we have dynamic nodal loads, um, full time history, um, accelerations and so on. In terms of uh, some very, uh, specific floor, uh, specific type of loads which we have uh, for buildings, um, that is the floor loads and the pressure loads, uh, more specifically the floor loads. Um, the software support, uh, supports definition of floor loads where we just define those on a given level and then even without modeling the slab, let's say we have a rigid diaphragm which we don't want to complicate our model with, the software will uh, distribute the load appropriately one way or two way on our structural frame. Um, and the pressure loads, um, naturally those are applied to plate elements, so if we model anything with um, 2D plate elements or solids, we can put pressure loads on them as well. In terms of wind and seismic loads, the software uh, supports different codes from around the world where those can be um, automatically generated in terms of static wind and seismic load. Uh, we just choose the code, we have our building profile and the software will automatically detect um, the levels, the different parameters um, and the width of the structure and so on to apply the appropriate uh, loads. Um, for multi-towers, what we also support is um, output for the different towers, so even, we, even though we have a single model, um, we can define the different levels if there are such on the two um, uh, on the two different towers, for example, and then appropriate loading will be defined for each tower um, individually. We also have dynamic loads, um, as I mentioned, we can specify um, dynamic loads for our time history analysis or response spectrum analysis, um, and then those can have arrival times. So, for example, we can simulate um, the movement of um, pedestrian walking for example over a slab and then analyze the structure and see how it behaves um, and um, reacts at any given time step. The hydrostatic pressure loads I mentioned them earlier those are very easy to define we can apply them over uh, surface um, and then those have uh, an automatically calculated increment based on initial uh, gra uh, initial uh, overburden and then increment which increases with depth. For the mass data, the software supports all, um, a few different types of generation of masses and we need those for our dynamic analysis obviously, but um, those can be defined uh, manually in terms of nodal masses, floor diaphragm masses and so on, or we can convert them based on the applied loads, so we can convert loads to masses, um, consistent masses and self-weight as well. In terms of boundary conditions, um, there are a number of different con uh, boundary uh, tools which are available, whether it be simple supports or springs, or point springs, general springs, surface springs and so on. So we have also a distributed spring over a surface um, that can be defined based on um, standard parameters of the subgrade reaction. We have spiral spring supports as well, um, but we also have all types of elastic links, rigid links, beam end releases and so on. So um, naturally anything you would expect is there and can be simulated so that we can analyze our structures um, the way that we want to. The software also has um, panel zone effect features, so the software can automatically consider um, the rigid zones in connections. Um, and it also uh, has the diaphragm um, automatic definition um, that I mentioned earlier, which is related to the floor definition. Um, this can be considered or not considered, or only given nodes can be disconnected, so all of this is supported. 
In terms of the Spring support for SO interaction, um, I mentioned this. We have an automatic feature that generates those for us, whether it be a Surface Spring distributed um, support or it, uh, it is a pile support. Those can be defined based on some standard um, parameters of the soil of the, or of the support condition, um, subgrade reaction, soil type, and so on, and then the software will generate the springs for us in terms of nonlinear springs to simulate the soil structure interaction. We also have, um, in relation to plate elements, we also have uh, cylindrical uh, orientation of the local axis, or basically what we allow is to change the plate, uh, the, uh, no, the, the local axis of the plate elements in any given um, direction not only limited to the orientation of the nodes and the plate definition. So this can be arranged appropriately to uh, obtain the results in a convenient manner. In terms of analysis, um, for analysis the software caters from, for any type of analysis that might be needed, um, starting with static and dynamic, we have free vibrations, response spectrum, time history, we also have a full set of nonlinear analysis, whether it be geometric or material. We have uh, buckling analysis, and we also go even into um, heat transfer and heat of hydration. So, if we have any large um, types, uh, any large uh, concrete uh, volumes that are poured, we can analyze those uh, for heat of hydration as well. Um, I mentioned that the software uh, caters fully for construction stage analysis together with time dependent effects and column shortening. All of this, we have special features for it which automatically consider all of this and provide the results ready for use. Um, we also have pushover analysis, um, beyond boundary nonlinear time history and elastic time history, so the full range um, of analysis to the highest level is all available. In terms of construction stage analysis, um, the software provides a very easy to use powerful tool where we, uh, in a single model, we simulate the full construction sequence for any given stage. We activate elements, load, and so on. The software analyzes it um, with the appropriate uh, sequence and then provides us the results for any given stage. For the same, again, we have the column shortening. This is directly available um, through a feature in the software. Time history analysis, as I mentioned, um, we have a full uh, time history dynamic analysis uh, where we can apply our loads um, with arrival time so we can simulate a consecutive um, uh, food step for example in this case and we can check the vibration of the structure for any given time step um, and what, how it behaves. In terms of uh, pushover analysis, this is also supported in the software. We can define our um, inelastic properties of the structure, assign those to the structure and then push it to see its performance. The performance, can, uh, the performance point can be checked according to different codes and then for any given step um, of, the load, of the loading, the software can plot for us the status and the condition of the um, different structural elements. Um, and again, this can be visualized in an in animation format. Uh, in terms of inelastic time history, boundary nonlinear um, time history analysis as well as inelastic time history in terms of um, hinges and fiber elements can be simulated in the software. We can define the full hysteretic behavior uh, for our elements and then we can assign that to the structure, run the analysis and again we can check the results um, in complete um, time history um, analysis. In terms of the fiber model, um, the software supports a fiber model definition where we can define our sections based on different zones uh, where we assign the material properties for um, the different fibers. Those are then analyzed and for, any gi for a given loading or given steps and stage, the software can tell us what is the condition of any uh, zone, so whether it is elastic, whether it started cracking, yielding, crushing and so on. And for the heat of hydration, um, as I said, the software supports heat of hydration analysis. We can simulate the full thermal, um, the full transfer of the uh, thermal effects, and the generation of the um, temperature, and then how it transfers towards the outside um, environment. 
Um, here you can see an animation of heat of hydration um, where on the left we simulate it um, with uh, cooling pipes and then on the right it's without cooling pipes. So the heat of hydration is simulated together with the construction stage sequence um, and we can also look into the effects of cooling or no cooling pipes. In terms of nonlinear analysis, the software supports geometric as well as material nonlinear. So for the material, we, uh, we support um, uh, all, the, um, uh, all the established uh, material models for nonlinear analysis. Um, from Mises, Trescomore, Column, and Drucker Pager, they're all available for us. We also have a structural masonry analysis. Um, we have a special material uh, model which is for masonry and it can be analyzed by elastic or um, inelastic uh, or nonlinear behavior. Um, and we can check our structures with this. Um, here we can see a, a simulation of material nonlinear analysis, um, very basic structure, but it gives us the idea of how um, the deformation progresses. And then we can also look, this is a whole uh, masonry structure um, loaded sideways for uh, deformations. A um, few examples of masonry structures, the software has been used um, quite actively, especially in Central Europe, for masonry structures where a lot of um, preserved historic um, buildings need to be analyzed and assessed. In terms of available elements in the structure, uh, in the software, I mentioned that we support everything from 1D to 3D, so we have um, compression tension only, we have gap hook elements, um, viscoelastic dampers, hysteretic systems, so all of this is available lead rubber uh, isolations, cables, um, general beam, tapered beam. So the software can deal with um, tapered sections as well. So we just define the two ends of the software uh, tapered section between um, based on linear or parabolic um, type of tapering, whatever we define. And we also have, as I said, plate elements, so plane stress, train, wall elements and plates, whether it be thick or thin and we go all the way up to the solid elements. Um, all of this is supported in the software and can be simulated um, in the same model so we can use the appropriate element for any, for the, um, any part of the structure. Um, we also have the 7 degree of freedom for beam elements uh, which we added, that is the warping, so the software can also consider warping effect in our beam elements. And um, we move on to post-processing. So to move on to, let's look at some of the features related to how we extract our results. In terms of beam results, um, we can check those in a number of different ways, um, starting with beam, moment, uh, beam diagrams. Um, all the forces within our elements can be checked in a graphical format. Or we can look, um, whether it be in the global um, model, or we want to look at detailed output for a given element. Um, with the beam detail analysis results. The results can also be checked, of course, in contours. We don't need to plot the full graphs. Um, we can look just at contours, um, which is very convenient to get an idea of um, where the results or the maximum effects are concentrated. We can also look at animations. We already saw a few during this presentation, um, but the software supports full animation um, features that uh, put us, uh, output for us um, in a convenient manner um, the results that we're looking at. We also have some special plots and graphs. Um, for example, the solid stress isosurfaces. So the software can um, plot for us the isosurface within solids where we have, um, say, the same, um, the same uh, stress or we can also look at stress diagrams and graphics. We also have the cutting plane stresses, so we can cut planes through our um, structures and so we will plot a contour for us uh, based on those planes. Um, and we can also ex uh, check everything in a table output, so everything is available as well uh, in graphic as well as in table format. Those tables are um, pretty much like Excel tables. They have all type of filters, sorting, style functions, and so on. And they're also fully compatible with Excel, so we can directly export them to Excel or just copy-paste um, part of the content that we want to select and just take it to Excel. Um, I mentioned earlier about the story-related functions. The software has a number of different um, features which are targeted towards um, buildings and story definition and story output. Um, this is all defined, um, this can be all defined automatically by the software and then we obtain directly results related to um, the stories like story drift, displacement, mode shapes, 
um, stability coefficients, um, there is a uh, irregularity check, um, for example, to check whether there's a weak story somewhere, and so on. And um, another feature related uh, to the post-processing and basically finalizing our uh, product. Obviously, when we complete our product, uh, projects, we need to submit a report on those. Um, in Midas, we have the dynamic report generator, um, which basically opens the Word environment for us and we can report, uh, generate a full report based on any table, image, um, graph, anything from the model that is um, provided as output can be directly drag and dropped into the, uh, into the report um, that we can print and submit. And the reason we call this generator dynamic is because if, let's say, through the process of um, designing and delivering our project, we have meetings with um, uh, the other uh, designers, say the architects, um, other specialists, the client or anyone else, um, if we make any modifications to the structure, to the project, we can make those modifications in the model, we run the analysis and then simply run the regeneration for the report and the software will update all the output, all the results directly in the report. So all the images, all the tables, everything will be updated for us so we don't have to rewrite the whole report. Now moving on to design capabilities, um, I mentioned earlier the software is not just analysis um, tool, it also designs for us, so let's talk a bit about that. We have uh, full support for concrete steel design um, within the software. Um, those are supported for a, different, for a number of different codes from around the world, but um, as we mentioned, the, your code is the most relevant here. Um, the software checks completely all type of uh, concrete elements, um, columns, beams, as well as steel. Um, we can check the um, full 3D uh, PMM interaction curve and so on. And the software can also plot for us a full detailed calculation report which gives us every single calculation, um, where it comes from, it references to the code, to the clause in a given code, and we can check that very easily. We also have an optimal design feature. Um, the software can design for us, not only check the, the structure. So if we specify concrete uh, sections without reinforcement, then the software can suggest for us the optimum reinforcement for the applied loading. Or in terms of steel elements, the software can uh, search for us from a chosen database for appropriate sections which will pass the sections or which will be more uh, optimally designed if, um, for example, the section we chose is um, over-designed. We also have the capacity design feature, so um, the software can run this automatically for us. We simply specify the ratio and then it can check and do the, for us the design uh, based on weak beam, a strong column, and all of this can be done um, automatically. We furthermore have design for, slab and, uh, for slabs and walls, so we can run design for um, our slabs in terms of flexure, shear, punching shear, and so on. And we can also check our walls um, for uh, PM interactions, so bending as well as um, axial and shear forces. And finally, to complete this presentation, um, I'm just going to go through a few more project applications just to show you um, where the software has been applied, what type of projects have been covered. Um, as I mentioned, the software is not only building targeted, it's just general structures, um, any type of structure that you need to deal with. So we have a number of world venues in terms of stadia, arenas, um, different gymnasia and so on. Um, we have uh, airport terminals, um, arts buildings, so um, special feature build buildings and so on, as well as, uh, of course, buildings uh, for office and residential, whether it be medium, low or high rise. So just a few um, project, um, just a few structures that you might be uh, you're probably familiar with. The Beijing National Aquatic Center, um, which was an iconic building during the 2008 um, Summer Olympic Games. We have also the basketball gymnasia for the same for the Beijing Olympic. Um, we also have Beijing University of Technology Gymnasium, which is the largest pre-stress suspension dome ceiling um, constructed. Um, and we have, of course, um, a bit more conventional type of stadiums, the Seoul World Cup Stadium, um, which was designed using MIDAS. But we also have, um, as I mentioned, airport terminals and so on. 
Uh, we have the Incheon International Airport Transportation Center as well as the Beijing Capital Terminal 3 uh, for the international airport. Um, we have some iconic um, special uh, uh, buildings which is the Opera House in Beijing, China as well as the Erdos Museum, the Maritime Museum and so on. And some high-rise building, you have the, we have the, uh, the Yongsan International Business District, um, which is a 640 meter tall building. We have the Adelis um, in Seoul, South Korea, which is um, a three-tower um, complex, residential and office. We have the Gate of the Orient in China, the China Pavilion, Germany and Saudi Arabia Pavilion. Um, and also the Performing Arts Center, so all types of different venue structures um, with um, exotic, uh, iconic shapes have been uh, managed with in the software. Currently um, under construction we have the Lotte World Tower, um, which will, once constructed, will become um, one of the tallest structures in the world um, with its 556 meters. But the software is not only um, targeted towards um, commercial and uh, commercial buildings. It can also be done. Uh, it can. It's also used in plants. So here we can see a blast furnace um, that has been uh, analyzed in the software. Um, so we can we look at all types of industrial structures as well. Um, we have the Pohang uh, power plant here. Um, we also have a gantry cr uh, a crane girder uh, detail analysis that has been done with Midas Gen. And here we have the second blast furnace um, in Pohang as well. Um, we have some more crane detail analysis um, as well as uh, vessels for um, reactors and so on. So the software, if I can just summarize it, it is the one-stop solution for any type of building in general structure. Um, it caters for all types of materials, elements, projects, um, and anything that you might need to look into. Um, this uh, concludes my presentation for today. Um, I hope you find it interesting. If you have any questions, uh, please post them in the question box. Um, we do have a bit of time left, so we, might an we can answer a few questions right away. Um, or not. if not, then we will just address them via email later on. If you need to contact us, you can see our details on screen. Um, there is the UK support at MidasUser.com, and that is the email you can use for direct communication with us, or you can go to our website and just check anything that you need in relation to our products. My name was Ivan Mikhailov, um, and it was a pleasure to provide this presentation for you today. I'll leave the session open for another five to ten minutes if you have any questions. Thank you for your attention.